Hey everybody, we're back. It's me and Lake here in the dyno cell this time. And yes, uh, you know, we've been working on the engine performance expo engine for quite a long time now. Yes. Been through a number of different iterations and um, made some big power. We did, yeah. So I kind of wanted to share with everybody what happened along the way and what changes we made to be able to do it. Right, we definitely hit some limitations along oh, yeah, the way. Absolutely. And so it's kind of a cool learning process to kind of see sure. what those limitations were. Some of that came out when we did the expo. So if you guys right. remember, we ran the engine naturally aspirated and everything was mm -hmm. great. Yep. Then we bolted on the supercharger and everything was even greater. Oh yeah. And, uh, but what we found is we ran into a limitation right away where our fuel system in the dyno just couldn't keep up. We had right. way more engine and, and boost. Because what happens is when you go up and boost, you, you inevitably raise the fuel pressure, which taxes your fuel pump and all that stuff right. harder. And so I the think fuel, that point, the fuel pump just couldn't keep up with the no. level of fuel supply needed to make that level of boost. That's right. And in fairness, the, the pump was rated for about 1,000 horsepower, and we made 1,046. So right. no complaints. It did right. its job. And so the obvious solution to us was, well, shoot, let's just put a second fuel pump. Right. Which was actually pretty easy in our dyno cell because the way that we have it set up is I have two different fuel tanks right. that would go to the same pump. And exactly. then the pump, you had valves you could switch. And the reason that we did that initially so we could try out all kinds of different fuels. Fuels, right, yeah. We realized pretty quickly, though, that, well, shoot, we could also put the same fuel in both tanks if you wanted to. And then you don't run out as much or you know, um, so on and so forth. That worked out really good when we wanted to upgrade the fuel system because then all we had to do is buy the identical fuel pump yep. and put it on there. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course we needed a second regulator and all that. And, and so we did that. We ran the engine and it was vastly improved. All of a sudden we could turn more RPM, we could make more boost. But the trend that we were seeing previously where you would start the run and your fuel pressure would be quite high, right. it would tend to taper off at the end really severely. I think we started at about 70 pounds of fuel pressure and we ended at about 30. Wow. Which yeah. is really not good. Now, what saved us was using that Holly EFI system. Yes. <laughs> the closed loop control from the oxygen sensor was going, hey, wait a minute, we're too lean. And it was... It was Need more fuel. Yeah, it was temporarily fixing our problem because it was increasing the pulse width to the fuel injector. So right. if I have less pressure going in and I hold it open longer, I can get back to the same fuel flow. Yeah. Problem is, that's a temporary fix because eventually you can't open the injector any longer yeah. and you're still going to run out of fuel. So yeah. we squeaked by at that 1,046 level. Mm -hmm. We put another uh, fuel pump on and then we could really crank it up. We got to 1,317 horsepower. And it was great, except that we noticed the problem was already starting to come back at the higher power level. Right. And at first I thought, well, geez, how can that be possible? Like we have two fuel pumps now. Yeah. And then it occurred to me that I hadn't actually looked at the entire fuel system together and go, where is the restriction? Well, right. Where the restriction ended up being was our fuel pressure regulator. So for those of you that are out there unfamiliar with EFI systems and how they work, what happens is you, you have fuel coming into the regulator and it's got a spring-loaded diaphragm at a preset pressure. It opens up and instead of fuel coming straight across and going out to your engine, some of it will bypass and go back, back to, to the, the tank, tank right? Yep. So this particular regulator was set up with a dash, uh, what is that, a dash four inlet, or yep. dash, dash six inlet, sorry, dash yep. six, six inlet, inlet, outlet, and six back to the tank. But when you looked in here, the holes were actually really tiny. Yeah. Compared to the brand new Holly regulator, or Earl's regulator that Holly yep. sent us, we're using a part number 12846 ERL, if you wanna look it up, yep. and it used dash eight fittings everywhere. So it uses <laughs> an eight ORB in, eight ORB out, and an eight ORB return. Okay. So we realized that the problem was we had one regulator that was big and, and really good, but we had kept our old regulator. Right. So that new fuel pump couldn't live up to 100% of its capacity. Right. So this went, was the restriction. Yeah, this was the restriction. And so yeah. it didn't just magically stop being the restriction since we got more fuel pump. Right. It was just more of a restriction in the way. So even though the extra fuel pump allowed us to get to the higher power level, we had to go back and rethink the entire system. So now what we've done is we went back and got a second Earl's regulator. Yep. So literally now what we have is two completely separated fuel systems, two fuel tanks, two fuel pumps, two fuel filters, and two big regulators. Now, we can still valve them so that we can run the same fuel in both, both. To, to an engine right. if we want, and that has dramatically increased our power capacity of the dyno cell. So without the help from Holly to figure that out and get the right parts, <laughs> you know, you would have chased our, our tails forever. So hopefully our struggle will make your struggles less. Exactly. 